uh, international that was in London. So uh, it's a lot to, to look against on the other side of the table for Ryan, but uh, we'll see if he's able to uh, to play against one of the greats. I think his uh, achievements aren't quite as impressive as Michael Pramwatt's, <laughs> but he does very well at local events. Uh, if you ever turn up to a League Cup in South Australia, you know that Ryan's definitely who you're going to face in the final. Uh, and he's done quite well with a lot of our regionals as well, top eights, top 16s, uh, in recently. Yeah, and uh, it looks like Ryan may have got a little bit of uh, his deck list. Uh, it, it looks very similar to what uh, Bramwatt won a regional with earlier this year in Memphis. So... Uh, Maybe these players are a little more familiar with each other than we know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Um, Michael being the uh, pioneer of the Zoroark Lycan Rock list, which Ryan's going to be playing, and Michael himself this time not going for a Zoroark Lycan Rock build. He's instead going for the Buzzwall Lycan Rock. Yeah, we see the prize cards coming down. Double Guzma down. Uh, that's a, a little scary. <laughs> Could be problematic in the late game when you need those uh, last two prizes to take. Yep. And uh, we do see the handshake. So these players are underway. And we're starting off the game, Michael with the buzzwall. I believe Ryan's going first. Starting with that Tapu Lele is possibly not the starter you want to see in the active spot. Uh, it does give him options, though, for his uh, Max Elixirs, uh, if he's able to hit those and, and get some Pokemon going on the bench. But, uh, yeah, we're going to have to see what he's going to bridge it here for, which is certainly the supporter of choice on the first turn for most players. Yeah, we do see that uh, Ryan is starting off with that Bridget. Very strong card, going to get himself three Pokemon down on the bench. And, of course, you want to start off getting those Zoruas. They evolve into Zork, and you can really get a lot of your trade engine going very quickly. Uh, although you do have that fighting weakness, you just got to get these guys down fast so that you can evolve them and hopefully not get uh, one hit knocked out. Yeah, trade is certainly one of the best abilities to come out of these uh, GX Pokemon. It's just the ability to throw away a card you don't need, and therefore thin your deck by getting rid of it, and then picking up two cards in the process as well. Yeah, it looks like that's all Ryan had for us on the opening turn here. Now it's over to Michael, and uh, looks like his start's not going to be as explosive. Just the Guzma on, it, on the Zerua, but hey, it's going to start with some, some prize cards. Yeah, and clever there that he benched the Rockruff after playing Guzma because he wants to keep that Buzzwall in the active spot. And that Jet Punch hitting for weakness is going to put a little bit, bit of pressure on Ryan, I think. Um, and he follows that with a Max Elixir, so he's also going to get an energy down on the Rockruff, which is threatening a Lycan Rock the next turn. Yeah, this is a very dangerous start here for uh, Michael. Already going to get himself a prize card to open it up and threatening with that Lycan Rock. And uh, Ryan wasn't even able to get an energy down on his side of the board, so uh, could potentially spell some danger here. And we'll have to see where he's going to place the damage with the Jet Punch as well, uh, whether it's on the Zorua to pressure a Zoroark later or onto the Rockruff. Uh, yeah, I really like this uh, this 30 on the Rockruff. You, whenever you have 30 damage on Rockruff, that means that you want to evolve it to Lycanroc so that you're not knocked out immediately. But are you really getting the most value out of your uh, Bloodthirsty Eyes if you're doing it on the second turn? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, and there's nothing to stop Michael doing that again next turn and just knocking out another Zorua and then taking out a Rockruff, but, although now it's become a Lycanroc GX. Uh, we'll have to see if it uses that Bloodthirsty Eyes ability, which essentially has uh, the same effect as that old Lysander card. Brings one of your opponent's Pokemon into the active spot. And he's chosen the Rockruff. Yeah, uh, that Rockruff with the energy attached to it means that potentially it could be knocked out with just the double colorless energy from this Tapu Lele now. So that extra energy attachment that Michael was able to get off the Max Elixir could punish him here. And I think that's quite significant. If you can get rid of that Rockruff with the energy, it means that there's not going to be a follow-up Lycanroc uh, anytime soon. Well, unless Michael can get a Max Lisa off yeah. and a couple of little shenanigans. He's got a couple of shenanigans in there to do it, but definitely uh, much more difficult if that energy's not on board. I agree. But we see Ryan also now has that uh, Zorak GX into play, so he can start using that trade and getting rid of maybe superfluous Bridget's he doesn't need anymore or any other cards he just doesn't want to see in this matchup. Yep, yeah, um, Ryan is going to get himself six cards along with two extra from trade, so double colorless energy is certainly possible here. Yeah, definitely to get that early knockout on the Rockruff, and we have to see here, but I don't think he's hit it. Uh, like we said, still has the trade option just to dig through two more cards. Yeah, also we do see that Mindjack Zorark, but he has an Ultra Ball, and that might mean that he goes for another Zorark GX for more trades. Just depends what he draws here, and doesn't look like energy. And I think that Mind Jack, uh, the Zorak that's able to use Mind Jack, it's quite interesting in this matchup. Uh, it can actually hit 190, which is Buzzwall's HP, yeah. uh, which sort of puts this a, a little bit, gives Ryan a little, few more options, I think, given that the uh, Zorak GX's max damage output with the choice band is typically 150. But it looks like he chooses to throw it away and goes for a Zorak GX instead. Yeah, I think Ryan knows that Michael's going to be playing a small bench just to avoid dangerous rogues. 
Uh, and that mind jack kind of plays the same game there. So <laughs> going to go ahead and get extra cards out of his trade. It's, um, that's what happens when you're playing against some of the world's best players. They always <laughs> have the, the best strategies. How do they you. know what to do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and look at that. The double colorless energy. Big draw here. Is able to uh, play the parallel down. Also get this knockout on the rock rough. So very last card. And it worked out perfectly for Ryan opening up with that first prize card. Yeah, and they'll both go down to five prizes, uh, which isn't too significant right now. But he still didn't pick up those Guzmas. So if he's ever looking for a Guzma late game, that's where they are. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Michael now leading with the Buzzwall GX. Uh, what are his options here? I guess he can jet punch. Uh, he can... It's unlikely he's going to get any other attack off with, with Buzzwall this turn. Yeah, but if he wants to take a knockout here, he'd have to get Max Elixir, Energy Switch, and his attachment onto the Buzzwall. Seems very difficult for him to be able to pull off such a, a trick. So probably just going to get a Jet Punch and uh, try to set up some damage, perhaps on uh, Lycanroc, uh, get a little extra there. Um, because Zorak is already in knockout range, just because of his fighting yeah. weakness. <laughs> yeah, almost everything in Michael's deck can just knock out that Zoroark pretty cheaply as well. Um, yeah, we're going to have to see if he has those energy switches. Uh, it's a card that we haven't typically seen in Oceania in a lot of lists. It seems like something that's just come out of Europe or come out of America. Yeah. Um, and some people are also playing that multi-switch card. So not sure which you believe is better, energy switch or multi-switch. And Yeah, in which uh, case? I mean, Paramount was one of the players playing that multi-switch in his original Zork uh, Lycanroc list. And we've seen him switch over to energy switch just so that... Uh, that strong energy isn't as important. He really just wants to have the option to move energies from the active or uh, from a bench Pokemon to a different bench Pokemon. And here we see Bloodthirsty Eyes from Michael there pulling up Zorak GX. And then he plays an N. It's so interesting that Bloodthirsty Eyes is such a powerful ability. It means that you can pull up an opponent's Pokemon. You don't have to waste a Guzma. And then you can play a supporter afterwards and hopefully disrupt their hand with an N. Yeah, and he can get some really da uh, dangerous damage here with his uh, Buzzwall. <laughs> if he even gets an Energy Switch and a Float Stone, he can use Dangerous Rogue and take a knockout here on the Zorark. So a lot of options. Just really depends what Michael's able to draw into here. Yeah, and he also is able to get down the Remorade as well, which means in future turns, once he gets down the Octillery, he'll be able to have a lot more uh, draw support going to the future turns. Absolutely, and we see that Brooklet Hill as well. A great card in this deck. All the Pokemon essentially are fighting or water, so uh, going to be able to search out a little more. He already has one Remoraid. Uh, don't know if he needs a second, so yeah, just going to take that Regirock EX. Uh, and that Regirock is going to be able to give him 10 extra damage, essentially 20 against these Zoroarks, so uh, it's a nice little boost. Yeah, it just means that that uh, Jet Punch, just for one energy, if you have a strong energy, if you have a Choice Band and a Regirock, that's doing an obscene amount of damage <laughs> yeah. just for one energy. Uh, it really takes you back to those sort of Landorus EX days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I believe he's got down another Buzzwall, so hopefully able to pair that with a couple of Max Elixirs and get a secondary attacker other than Lycanroc GX going. Yep. Uh, we are going to see the initial Jet Punch here. It's going to be 80 damage, and uh, interested to see where he goes with the 30. It's going to be on Zorark. Yeah, I think the math is a little bit relevant. It just means that uh, the Strong Energy Choice Band and what is it, a Kukui maybe? Yeah. Uh, or, or the Regirock. We'll be able to do 180 onto a Zoroark. With that 30 softened up, that's a that's a knockout. Yeah. Um, whereas you'd, you'd need a couple of extra pieces uh, or a few different pieces to be able to knock it out otherwise. Yeah, we could definitely see that come into play here. And uh, already off the trade, we see some pretty important cards for Ryan. He's able to find an Acerola which uh, can help him in some of these uh, awkward spots where damage starts to build up after all these uh, uh, jet punches. Yeah, certainly, like I said just before, he's got that 30 damage on the Zoroark. He can just flip that up with the Acerola, reset that Zoroark the next turn. Um, or, if he wants to, reuse Bloodthirsty Eyes with that Lycanroc GX, uh, which he may need to do, given that he has two Guzma prized. Yeah, and, uh, and now an interesting spot here, too. He's going to use the Acerola as his supporter for the turn, but uh, now what other Pokemon does he want in play? He's, he can start to replay the Zerua line, but it gets a little risky when you start benching Zeruas at this stage. You don't want to just walk into another Guzma. Yeah, definitely. And what is quite relevant for some people to know, perhaps, is that uh, Tapu Lele's attack doesn't actually hit for weakness. So even though it looks like it could be doing a lot of damage against this Buzzwall, uh, weakness doesn't apply. So it's just simply going to be 90 damage. Yeah, none of the Mewtwo uh, X Ball or uh, Evil Ball attacks are uh, nothing to worry about like <laughs> yeah. that. So <laughs> uh, just going to hit him for 90 damage, which is still fairly relevant. And uh, this Tapu Lele is not going anywhere right now. With uh, just three bench spots, uh, he's not in uh, Dangerous Rogue uh, knockout range just yet. He would have to have the Choice, choice Band. band. Uh, right so on cue. There you go. <laughs> now we're going to see what else he has. Uh, it looks like Guzma is going to line up perfectly with that Lycanroc. Yeah, excellent. And so that's one Dangerous Rogue against 
a lycan rock. Uh, it's using its own attacks against itself. <laughs> uh, and it's probably going to go ahead in prizes there and, and take that knockout. Um, and then sort of leaves Ryan with not too many threats on the board. I mean, that Lele is not doing too much work, and that Zoroark can only hit for a max of 150 damage with a choice ban. So, yeah, it's it's looking like Michael's uh, in a quite favorable position here. Yeah, when the founder of the deck uh, isn't playing it at the international. Uh, he might have an answer for it. Yeah, I think <laughs> and it looks like he found a pretty good matchup, and uh, he knows how to play it. He's been playing this so far flawlessly. Yeah, he knows exactly how to how to run the deck. And then we see the Pseudo Wudo as well, which is quite an interesting card that's been popping up in not just these types of decks, but also any decks that run counter energy as well. Yeah, um, It's just able to you know copy the, the opponent's attack that was just used against you, and sometimes that's enough to just give yourself that momentum back. Absolutely. When you start playing cards like Max Elixir and Energy Switch, you can get that Pseudo Wudo charged up pretty quickly, but... Looks like Michael's going to miss on this Max Elixir here, so uh, no extra energies for him this turn, at least. That's always devastating, especially when you have a high count of energy. You're like, what's happening? Where are all my energy going? Are they all prized? Yeah, he uh, he does play nine of these fighting energies. The four strongs, uh, they may look good for uh, extra damage, but you can't get them off that Max Elixir, unfortunately. Yeah, and then Michael does go down to three prizes there, taking a knockout on the Lycanroc GX. And... I wonder what um, Ryan's going to go into here. Does he just keep swinging with this Tapu Lele? <laughs> it's almost his best attacker right now. He's He wasn't able to get another Rockruff into play. Also, uh, I think he kind of purposely avoided that to make sure Dangerous Rogue uh, could do the least amount of damage, but Michael had all the answers, and now it looks like Ryan's probably going to be a turn behind now. He can't get these Rockruffs into play and really uh, finally take advantage of Michael having five bench Pokemon. He threw away Mindjack earlier, so... How do you beat something with uh, all this hit points when you've just got a Tapu Lele? Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> difficult. Uh, we also have to recognize that even though it's used its GX move, Lycanroc still has another move, and that is Claw Slash. Uh, it does 110 damage, which seems maybe perhaps a little bit mediocre, but when you add in all the buffs with Choice Band and Regirox and Strong Energies, it can really add up, and he could actually ultimately get a knockout on this Tapu Lele. Yeah, he, he's not too far off just now. He's uh, doing 141.50 with the Rock Ruff, so just a Strong Energy away uh, from being able to close out uh, on w the biggest attacker Ryan has right <laughs> now, and almost the game. And so benching that Rockruff, although it seems, you know, he has to get something going, he has to get some momentum back, Ryan, uh, it is just a Guzma away from, you know, a knockout with just a one energy attacker. Yeah, and uh, he's going to do everything he can to avoid that being knocked out. He's going to play the end, try to limit... If Michael's able to target down this Rockruff, I can't see Ryan being able to close out this game with just the Tapu Lele. Yeah, definitely. Although stranger things have happened, you never know. <laughs> That's uh, true. That, yeah, as we were saying, that disruptive N, not quite as potent when you have Abyssal Hand uh, at your disposal, able to draw back up to those five cards. Yeah, and so many cards uh, in Michael's deck are instantly playable, so he will be able to play out much of his hand and then draw up with that Abyssal Hand to five. Yeah, definitely. So Tapu Lele here... Uh, if it is going to attack, it's going to be doing 110 damage, which isn't too shabby. It does yeah. put uh, Lycanroc GX at half health, or a little under half health, uh, which means if the Tapu Lele does survive, it can get a knockout, but certainly not an ideal position for Ryan. I mean, we've seen him use that Ace Arola. He's got puzzles a time, so we could see him just chained together with this Tapu Lele if a no strong energies ever hit the board, and he just pick it up and keep going at 110, and that's that could get stuff done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's certainly a strong attack, uh, energy drive. <laughs> Never discount that Tapu Lele. It's not just there for the supporter search. Uh, but like we see, uh, Michael's just drawn into cards that he can burn, Max Elixir. Uh, and once he's got his hand down to a small enough size, he can just use Abyssal Hand and fill it back up again and find yeah. what he needs. Uh, Michael wisely bringing that energy over to the clean Buzzwall. He's got damage on his Buzzwall, but of course he does play those uh, energy switches. So he will be able to move those energies in the coming turns and uh, can just start over fresh with this new Buzzwall. Yeah, it just gives him more and more options. He has all these pieces he can put together and use. Uh, like we discussed before, Puzzle of Time, amazing card. Can just get you back resources you've either lost or used already. Uh, but there he plays a Sycamore. He's going to draw a fresh seven cards. So I think he's maybe looked at, what, 16 cards this turn or something absurd. <laughs> That's right. He gets to see a lot of his deck, and uh, he's not done yet. He's definitely still looking for that strong energy. And there it is. And there's a strong energy. So, Michael Paramowat rolling. All you uh, have to do is mention a card, Kyle, <laughs> and then it comes into play. I should uh, I should charge him for this yeah. if, if I'm going to keep giving him every card he wants. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this will just get a straight knockout on this Tapu Lele GX. Michael will go down to one prize, and... You know, at this point, I think Ryan's possibly looking to game two. Yeah. Uh, to see, you know, what he can do differently and what he can maybe do better. 
Now, of course, uh, that this means the Rockruff is not being knocked out. We already saw a supporter for the turn. Tapu Lele can knock out this Lycanroc, and that Max Elixir might have actually been pretty relevant. If he was able to get another energy onto the Buzzwole, he'd be a uh, he'd be uh, setting up a big knockout to end the game. But yeah, he may not have uh, the setup to do it in the coming turn now. Yeah, even the, even the Zoroark on Ryan's side, just with a DCE, and I think one more Pokemon played on the field can actually get a knockout in that Lycanroc GX. Although it's not the best Pokemon to have in the front in this matchup when you're weak to everything in your opponent's <laughs> field, uh, it can still get that knockout and potentially not be returned knocked out, which yeah. I think is the most important part. Um, but either way, yeah, it could just be Tapu Lele for days. We'll see what Ryan's going to go with. Down goes Tapu Lele. Michael just won prize now. Doesn't have to worry about N because he's got that Octillery. Uh, seems like Michael's got everything he needs, and now Ryan's just got to figure out uh, how to get through this. <laughs> it promotes a Tapu Lele here, uh, which will be doing 100 damage with an energy attached. Mm -hmm. Finally got down two Zoroark, so he can trade away and find that DCE or find that Lycanroc. Though it looks like he has a couple in hand already. Three, in fact. Yeah, he's uh, definitely got the energies he needs. Now he just wants to find probably an N. Uh, just try to remove this Lycanroc from the board. Uh, just hope that Michael doesn't find energies for the, for the rest of his days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That Ultra Ball does give him the option to find that Lycanroc GX if there is one in deck, but he'd have to attach to the Rockruff, which becomes the Lycanroc, and retreat the Tabu Lele, uh, which makes it a little bit awkward, uh, unless he's going to play a Guzma and target something else on Michael's field. Yeah. But unfortunately, you can't pair a... Uh, you can pair a... Uh, Bloodthirsty Eyes with an N, but you can't pair a Guzma with an N. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a little bit awkward there. <laughs> That's right. We do see Rescue Stretcher. Uh, Ryan is eyeing up, shuffling in a few Tapu Leles and a, a Lycan Rock, it looks like. Uh, just hoping that this game goes a little longer. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm not sure he can come back from a, f what, four prize deficit? Uh, yeah. But he's, he's trying. He's really making it work. Yeah, being able to shuffle that Tapu Lele in means this Ultra Ball is able to grab Tapu Lele, grabbing the end here, so is able to try to limit Michael here now. Going to put him down to one card, but of course, Abyssal Hand. Abyssal Hand, yeah. It's, it's, it's running rampant now that there's not really any Garbo Toxin around, so that, uh, that artillery putting in work for everyone at the moment. It's great. It's essentially a trade as well, but for one prize. That's right. Uh, now, uh... Michael just has to try to find his way out of this. The Lele is going to take out the Lycanroc here, doing 100 damage. Uh, just needs to start finding some energies on his side when his turn comes up. So what can what will Michael promote here uh, into into this Tapu Lele? Well, uh, I believe he promote the undamaged Buzzwole. Uh, oh, possibly the Reggie Rock, which has a uh, floatstone. Oh, if it has a floatstone, yeah, then yeah, yeah, that's great. It's at the bottom of my screen there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow, and look at that. Ryan was able to find double puzzles, so if he does get a turn, he can definitely pull off some pretty great things. Yeah, there's definitely things he can work with now. He can look at a discard pile and essentially just choose two cards that he wants and put them straight into play, and he's got some fairly good options there. A lot of his you know, tech supporters, uh, Kikui, Acerola, uh, the Mindjack, Zoroark, although not potentially relevant now, given he's that there's no Zoroas on the Parallel play. City in there, too. But he could uh, probably he could work out some, some pretty interesting plays. Oh, puzzle for puzzle. <laughs> and, a, uh, and an Ultra Ball. Okay, so yeah. he's setting himself up for next turn, I guess. Maybe to get the Lycan Rock, yeah. uh, or even possibly this turn. Conserving those resources, but also going to get himself something this turn. Not too bad. And he's probably also looking to maybe thin his deck a little bit. Uh, just, you know, I, I don't think Michael's going to want to play an end, but if he happens to... Yeah, also uh, evolving here, doesn't have to use Bloodthirsty Eyes, just getting that evolution means that uh, Guzma and Strong Energy was not a knockout uh, anymore for that final prize for Michael. Yeah, that's all Michael's looking at, just one prize, and that's also why he's never going to bench another Zoro one. That's right. <laughs> uh, so here he takes a knockout on the Lycanroc GX, goes down to three prizes, and Michael here just needs to end up with one more, pri uh, one more knockout. Well, he found two cards he couldn't play, so just an Abyssal Hand for three. Does find that strong energy. Finds two of them, actually, but uh, looks like not much else. Uh, maybe an N? Yeah, we'd want to see a, a Max Elixir or a uh, Energy Switch here to, you know, get a Knuckle Impact for the Knockout yep. uh, from that Buzzwall, just onto the, straight onto the Tabu Lele. And, oh, wow, this is where it can get dangerous. Uh, anywhere he attaches this energy, especially if it goes onto the clean Buzzwall, uh, he could be looking at a, a Dangerous Rogue knockout uh, return from Ryan, and then Ryan's at one prize each. <laughs> yeah, suddenly the momentum has shifted a little bit, and Michael's really thinking, like, where do I put this energy? And just imagine if he hit the Max Elixir last turn, he won the game. He, yes. he would have had a, a giant knockout here, uh, and we'd be looking at game two, but no. Uh, that's what happens sometimes when you play those 
one after using Abyssal Hand. And it's up to that one energy switch. Oh yeah, that, that if one he, max elixir. If he's able to pull that off, then uh, then he's Michael Paramwat. <laughs> oh yeah, very classic. But uh, if Ryan is able to get down the uh, dangerous rogue GX next turn, I think Ryan is looking like he's going to be pull ahead. Yeah, uh, it'd be a great spot for him. Just one card now for Michael. Can he find it? We're searching for that energy switch. Oh, he's promoting, but uh, I think he'd promote regardless. Oh, oh my the gosh! Energy switch. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, he's Michael wow, Pramwat. He if you were wondering at what home, a he is Michael Pramwat. That is straight off the top. That is fantastic. He's able to find the one card played to all his outs, and there he goes. He says, "Yeah, I'm good." <laughs> yeah, that's just that's just how I roll. That's what happens. Oh, that was an amazing finish. Uh, we ruled Ryan out pretty early in that game, but he made a pretty remarkable comeback. If Michael hadn't drawn that energy switch... Yeah, I think the game turned around at that, that point, honestly. He would have been... Uh, it's not hard to believe he just grabbed that Guzma, uh, take a knockout on that Buzzwall 2 energy, and uh, I don't see a way that Michael can close out from that stage, but, I mean, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> <laughs> in this case, perhaps. <laughs> uh, so Ryan's, I'm assuming, going to elect to go first this turn. What should he look to do differently? I, I think last time he did play Bridget, which is the optimal turn one yeah. uh, for, for most decks, actually, in the format right now, uh, not just this one. Yeah, that worked out very well for him. I think he needs to get down two Rock Ruffs pretty early. Uh, if, uh, of course, you want to get those Zeruas down, but if he's able to set up a bench uh, that has multiple Zerua, multiple uh, Rock Ruff, then he doesn't feel like he has to throw down that dangerous, uh, that Lycan Rock with Dangerous Rogue uh, so early uh, and just evolve just to get... Uh, to, he doesn't have to worry about getting knocked out. If he's got a second Rock Ruff, uh, he can save that Bloodthirsty Eyes for an important turn. Definitely, but it's also about where the energy's played. So if the, you know, one of the Rock Ruffs has one energy, of course Michael's going to target that one down and try to knock that out. So I think it's as much about Ryan setting up as also Michael getting the optimal cards on his turn to be able to knock out any potential later threats. Right, yeah, that opening turn where he wasn't able to get down any energy with that Bridget, that did affect him a lot. So Rock Ruff energy, probably what he's looking for. Prize card's not terribly bad for either player. I think the loss of Max Elixirs, two of them for Michael, is a little bit harsh. Yeah, that could be bad. Um, it just <laughs> depends on when you draw them, of course. And his I guess, MVP yeah. <laughs> card, Energy Switch, was in there as well. Oh, so. uh, yeah. Uh, but here we see from Ryan, the, you know, usual Ultra Ball, probably into Lele, probably into Bridget, unless he doesn't have another supporter in his hand for next turn. Yep, uh, eyeing up that Mew EX also. Yeah, it's a great card to have in this matchup, certainly. Hitting that Buzzwall GX for, for weakness damage uh, uh, means that you can copy that Riders beating and just take a knockout. Of course, you, know, you can't grab it <laughs> with Bridget. Uh, Bridget does have that limitation that you cannot grab uh, the EX with the three. So uh, he's going to grab the Rock Ruffs, and this is a beautiful setup for him, able to get multiple Rock Ruffs down. I believe he does have a strong energy in his hand as well, so getting that energy down early on the Rock Ruff means he can start uh, putting Dangerous Rogue threats up very early. And we're looking at two different Rock Ruffs there. So one's the promo Rock Ruff, and the other one has the attack corner. Uh, the strengths of which are, are very different. I believe the promo Rockruff is there for walls matchups. Yeah. You can actually hit those hoopers. Uh, and the corner Rockruff has that niche play that you can trap one of your opponent's Pokemon in the active spot. That's right. We've seen so much uh, corner action throughout the history of Pokemon. It looks like Ryan is not respecting his Rockruff with corner <laughs> this time, however. He's actually just going to put it in harm's way. Uh, just a Regirock and a strong energy would be able to knock out this Rockruff and... Uh, I guess that's something that Ryan's willing to, to risk here. Yeah, he's willing to sacrifice that. The Rock Ruff doesn't look too bothered, though. It's pretty happy. Yeah, he's, but, uh, <laughs> he's smiling, protecting his fox friend Zerua with that floatstone <laughs> running away. And so I guess Michael here, obviously, Remoraid is a great start. Wants to get that artillery as early as possible. Also wants to get down energy. So any max elixirs, uh, an attach from hand, obviously. I mean, if he wants to, strong energy with the Regirock will knock out this Rock Ruff. Yeah. Uh, might be a bit greedy. Well, I want to get some other cards into play, but it's certainly an option. Yeah, we'll see what he decides to go with here. Of course, also has to respect Dangerous Rogue as a potential uh, attack from his opponent. So maybe he keeps a, a limited bench here. And uh, he's going to go with just 30-30 on both these Rock Ruffs. And uh, now Ryan feels like he needs to evolve. I believe he just top-decked a supporter. So he was actually just running with a Zoroark GX and a Strong Energy. And uh, hoping that he could just rip off the top and he actually did he got the the end but now what do you discard with the trade do you get rid of those strong energy of which there's only four and it's a pretty vital resource or do you get rid of the end which is actually your only supporter yeah do you play the end because uh michael didn't do anything <laughs> he just played a, a, a brooklet hill 
And this is kind of what happens that game of chicken when you play against Greninja, where they pass on the opening <laughs> turn. Uh, Michael can just attack with Buzzwall on the opening turn, and you don't know if he has Octillery in his hand. You, you have to end him and just hope that uh, that wasn't the, the wrong decision. Yeah, you have to go for the play that, I guess, benefits you. You can't sort of play to, to not lose, if that yeah. makes sense. You've got to play to win. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and we got to see here, is he going to go for a, a, a Riders Beating or a Dangerous Rogue, or is he just going to keep setting up and, and just put a little bit of chip damage, maybe? Uh, it's, a bit, it's a bit difficult to see what his what his strategy is going to be right now. Uh, that Rockruff certainly is kind of trapped in the active there. It has no energy. Uh, he does run Floatstone. There is one on the Zoroark GX. Uh, but it's not going to be attacking anytime soon, unless he does want to do that corner play. Yeah. Uh, which I probably wouldn't advise right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing too much in his hand here either. He still does have that trade available to him, so... Of course, going to throw away that Sycamore and grab himself two more cards. Finds Lycanroc, so able to protect this Rockruff on the bench from being knocked out and save those energies, which is great for him. Uh, I don't know if he's going to get too much value out of his Bloodthirsty Eye, so he could potentially grab Remorade if he just wants to try to buy a little time, though. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he could actually grab the Remorade and then corner. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's got that option there. Of course, we have the he's got the fighting energy in hand. Uh, now he just has to decide if attaching to his Lycanroc is more important. Guess Certainly. he's going to go with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunate. Uh, I wanted to see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if only. An another card he does have in hand is Enhanced Hammer, which I think could become quite relevant later on uh, to prevent Michael from getting any of those key knockouts, but certainly not this turn as he only has basic fighting energy in play. Uh, Michael here looking at his refreshed hand of six after that end was played. Uh, he's going to Ultra Ball here, possibly grabbing an Octillery uh, just to get his... Uh, Draw power happening. Absolutely. Uh, alternatively, other Boswells just have secondary attackers, like in Rock GX. But yeah, Octillery, best to get into play as early as possible, just to keep drawing those cards when you need them. That's right. And Ryan, he sees the the Floatstone hit the bench or hit the discard pile, so he knows at least one card in Michael's hand is a Floatstone. You don't just leave your Octillery stranded. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It does. It is a bit painful to, to have to discard Floatstones though, because there are so many targets here that could be Guzma Stall targets, if that makes sense. Definitely, yeah. Uh, like Reggie Rocks, but I think Michael's probably a skilled enough player not to just put those out there. Yeah, and uh, Michael, great setup here. He's going to be able to take a knockout on Zerua. Of course, going to refill his hand first. Uh, maybe if he's able to get down uh, more threats against this Lycan Rock, uh, he'd feel a little more comfortable. Because right now, it's really just that Rock Ruff uh, turning into a Lycan Rock GX to. Affe uh, affect the other Lycanroc GX. <laughs> <laughs> on the flip side, though, if he puts down too many Pokemon, he's then at risk of that dangerous Rogue GX. So It's it's a dangerous dance. <laughs> definitely. And he's going to take two prizes there. So he'll take off that uh, Rockruff that he just damaged earlier on in the game and hit the Zorua for 30, but with weakness, knocks it out as well. So it's a nice two prizes. It's almost like knocking out a GX. Yeah, it worked out very well for him. And Oh, he showed that he's got a Max Elixir. Come on, Framwatt. <laughs> <laughs> Cards in hand. He's just hoping that he gets end, of course. He just yeah, wants yeah. <laughs> Look at all these resources I have. End me, please. <laughs> well, Ryan uh, eyeing up a couple cards in his hand. He had the enhanced hammer he doesn't want to throw away. Uh, probably N is his best bet. <laughs> he d doesn't want to stick him more away a puzzle of time. I think he actually, is that two puzzles of time or is that a puzzle and an enhanced hammer? Yeah, I think he's got the puzzle and the enhanced. So he's just going to save those resources now with the N. I mean, it does put Michael down to four cards. Again, that abyssal hand being in play. But, uh, you know. Still, still better to disrupt the hand that they have because obviously Michael's going to set up to be able to use that hand the next turn. So he's not going to throw away all his good resources. Right. Uh, Brian does still have avail available to him a trade as well. So he will be able to see a lot of cards in his deck this turn. Does he even want to put down a Zorua? Does he want to start getting more Zoroaks in play? Yeah, I think he has to limit himself to just this one because he's he's seen what can happen with a Guzma and you also see a Rockruff on the bench, so that means that Bloodthirsty Eyes could pull up that Zorua. So there's no way that you can comfortably bench one. Yeah, it's such a little card, but so threatening. You know that Rockruff is going to turn into a giant werewolf and <laughs> knock out really anything that you have. That's uh, right. On the flip side, he's, he also has a Lycan Rock GX in play, Ryan. Uh, so he you know is threatening that also, kind of stunting Michael's bench a little bit, saying, you know, put down more Pokemon, get yourself more set up, and I will just knock out your, your best attacker. Yeah. Uh, Ryan was able to draw into both of the t uh, Puzzle of Time pieces. Going to look through his discard pile. I don't know if much of that helps him. I don't see an energy attachment for the turn, which means his only attacker would be his Lycanroc, and I don't know if he wants to put that into harm's way and use his only GX attack for... A uh, hundred damage. <laughs> yeah, it's not something you want to just throw out there, certainly, until you're going to get the max benefit out of it. Uh, I think his options at this point, he just has to try to get more Pokemon down. I think it's 
needs more attackers. That, that Zoroark leaving it in the active, trying to attack with that is not going to go so well when a Buzzwall can just as easily, one energy, choice band, Regirock, deal a lot of damage to that guy. And yeah, he, that's what he's doing. He's setting, putting, Ryan's putting down a Zorua. Hopefully you're going to get some more Zorak GX into play and get them th get some things going with trades. Yep, uh, you able to do it with the Rescue Stretcher as well. Didn't have to use his puzzle pieces, so uh, maybe you can find a little more use out of those in the coming turns. Yeah, and also able to then use those puzzles to use Stretcher again, or any card in his discard pile, which is yeah, pretty good, actually. It's a pretty good card. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Michael, of course, Tapu Lele going to grab himself a Guzma. And I think I know what he's going for here. <laughs> uh, it looks like that Zerua uh, will be the uh, the line here. Just take that out. Unless he has the knockout. And uh, he may have just played himself into it. He's not going to use Bloodthirsty <laughs> Eyes. Strong Energy be able to take him. And there goes Dangerous Rogue for 170 damage. Huge play here. Yeah, and that's how that 30 damage from Jet Punch should just really help soften up that uh, Lycan Rock. He's going to get a one-hit knockout now, uh, which is great. I mean, another option, as you were saying before, could have been to knock out the Zorua. Uh, you know, prevent Ryan from getting more trades off and just yeah. keep him locked at that one trade and yeah, hopefully if, not draw anything. If you got anything. the strong energy, you, you go for it, of but course. But yeah, in the, in the Lycanroc <laughs> GX war, <laughs> you've right. you got to take the first blood. Also, a huge Max Elixir uh, was successful for Michael. Able to get another energy down on his Buzzwool, something that he was missing last game. And this means that when Lycanroc takes these two prizes, two more available for Paramount to win the match, and he just needs one energy to do it. I'm sure Octillery will be able to help him get there. Yeah, definitely. That knuckle impact attack uh, from Buzzwall GX. Only 160 damage. Seems like not very much in this era where you have 210 HP Pokemon. But when you've got Lele sitting around that are just 170, that's just a strong energy or a Regirock or a Choice Band away from a knockout. That's right. And uh, Michael, we're also going to see him playing his bench out as much as he can now. Doesn't have to worry about Dangerous Rogue. There are no Rock Ruffs left. That means there's no Lycan Rocks left. So two prize cards more for Michael and such a great spot here. Yeah, only needs to take one more knockout on GX or EX and Zoroark is, unfortunately for Ryan, weak to fighting. So yep. really anything that Michael hits with at this point is going to get a knockout on Zoroark GX. And I think Ryan possibly knows that and is struggling to decide what to go into. Yeah, I mean, if, if he's got it, uh, then he can go get it. He's got the puzzles. It's just very hard to find the right line here. He might have to... Uh, set up some, some Tapu Lele attacks and just hope to chain those Ace Arolas. Uh, Michael just has to never see an energy again, and that's just so <laughs> much to ask for. It's, it's so difficult. Certainly when you have Octillery and supporters. And when he uh, top decks energy switches, and <laughs> you, you, you just can't ask for that. Yeah, definitely. I wish uh, Ryan's thinking now that he wishes he could top deck something. But <laughs> looking like he's going to play an N, gather that off the wonder tag of the Tapu Lele GX. Uh, he does go for the N just to disrupt Michael's hand. Um, again, he's going to be looking, be able to look at at least five cards uh, from that Abyssal Hand after he's drawn for his N, uh, which hopefully should give him some energies. He does run quite a few. I think Michael's got nine Fighting Energy and four Strong Energy in his deck. Yep. Uh, it's quite a lot of options. Yep, he's uh, definitely not done yet, and uh, I, f I feel like everything's looking Michael's way here. Uh, going to be able to get himself more cards, and Ryan... He's drawing some pretty useful cards for his plan right now. Uh, he wouldn't even have to have Ace Arola. He's got max, uh, the Max Potion, so he'd be able to Max Potion his Lele and just continue to use Double Colorless Energy uh, to potentially two-hit this Lycanroc. But you, yeah, Michael just has to have an energy. <laughs> yeah, how, how long does it last? I mean, there's an Enhanced Hammer, so that's getting rid of one energy. Uh, makes it a little bit more difficult, perhaps. It means you can't achieve your knockout with the Lycanroc GX, most likely. Uh and he's going to go in with Lele. I still think it's a correct play to enhance Hammer the fighting, the strong energy, even though Lele is going to do less damage. Yep. Uh, just so that Lycanroc can't, you know, get that return knockout straight away. That's right. And I'm, I, I like the play here. He, he can avoid a potential retreat into the Buzzwall now. It's a little more difficult. And uh, now Michael's eyeing up. What's the best odds I have to win this game here? Has the fighting oh. energy? Has the energy switch? Energy switch up. Really had to think about that play, though. I think he's wondering he mustn't have another energy in hand. Yep, uh, maybe he's going to fish for that Bloodthirsty Eyes or a Guzma to win the game here. If he just attaches, he can Claw Slash a uh, Zorark. But doesn't look like he hit it. Uh, yeah. Of course, does have that N. He could play out a few more cards and maybe uh, top deck that Lycanroc and uh, finish this game. So we'll just see what he, what he goes with here. Brooklyn Hill down probably just to thin his deck, but also to find... 
I think Regirock might be able to provide a little extra damage here. Maybe yeah, certainly. If he's able help. to retreat the Lycan Rock. Uh, I'm not sure if he wants to get rid of that many energy, though, through retreating. Uh, looks like just an, another Buzzwall. Buzz Probably just thinning, thinning his deck, making sure that he's going to have his outs next turn. Yeah. Uh, and able to draw them with that Abyssal Hand, with that Octillery. And Ryan has all his hopes pinned on this one Tabu Lele. It's unfortunately <laughs> quite similar to last game. He's got to get there. He's, he's, he's got a few cards to help him out, but uh, really just needs Michael to miss a lot. Yeah, and so there's an energy and a choice band that's oh, going to be doing just like, Look how close I was. 40 damage. If you try to retreat, I will take you out uh, with a jet punch. Yeah, that so. jet punch damage coming down, and that Tabu Lele only having 170 HP is quite relevant uh, instead of that 180. Yeah. So yeah, the, the the timer is really on Ryan here. I don't think he he needs to find something next turn, or the game will will end uh, in Michael's favor. The match will end in Michael's favor, actually. Yep. So I have to see what they draw off these uh off this end. Michael getting two cards, Ryan getting the full six, it's which like, sounds great, but it's quite <laughs> unfortunate this late in the game. That's right. You'd hope to have some prize cards by now. Uh, a couple of puzzles, though. Again, he's been very sparing with his use of puzzles, really trying to find the the correct uh, pieces to get back with it to be able to use. And there's the 140 damage onto the Lele. Put a clock on it. He can also ace a roll of the Lele and reset the board and continue with his same strategy. But again, Michael just needs that strong energy. Uh, and a Reggie Rock, although he cannot play Reggie Rock at this point. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll see what Ryan is able to find here. I don't think I saw Max Potion or Ace Arola. Of course, does have options with the trade uh, to find a few more pieces. Can't tell what that last card in his hand is, but he does have at least one puzzle piece. Looks like he uh, did not hit much there. Uh, Saru and Bridget aren't going to help you right now. So throws away that Bridget and going to keep looking. The choice band. A couple of Zoroas, a couple of N, choice band. I think that's two puzzle. I do believe he has two puzzle in hand. Yeah, so uh, he will have that Ace Arola option then. I believe he does have one in his discard pile. But does it just seem like it's delaying the inevitable really yes. here? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <I> mean, <laughs> he's, he's trying to stay in it, and why wouldn't you when it's game two? Right. Uh, well, we'll see right now if he has that Ace Arola. I don't see. Oh, but maybe it was that last card there. Yeah, he's got one in there. He's looking at Field Blower. You never know. You always want to stay in it for the you know, the best of three. If it's a game two and you've lost the first one, you never know how the clock might come into play and if, or if you could steal a win late. But I checking... Th I think he's going to count to see if he can potentially lock up the Octillery. Uh, he may be able to keep that in the active spot longer than Michael Paramo at once and buy himself some time here. He knows that Michael threw away some float stones early mm -hmm. and he may just be out. I mean, he'd have to just attach a couple of energy over time. Uh if he can get them and if they're not strong energy. Right, yeah, if he's got to count on these basic energies and knows that uh, this Octillery could get locked up, then we could see that be a line, but we'll see what Ryan's able to come up with here. Double puzzle's so going to come down. He was eyeing the field blower, so it's DCE and a field blower. Yeah, but uh, he has to know that he's getting knocked out by a buzzwall next turn, right? I mean, hopefully he has that awareness. Oh, I guess he's just going to go all in on this max potion then. Uh, he's going to hope that he finds it. I believe he only plays one. Yes, he does. So I don't believe we've seen it this game. So has it to find it. still be live unless it's in the prizes. Yeah, he had it in his hand earlier before uh, Michael's N and then lost it after that. So it's in there somewhere. I just don't know if he's going to be able to find it. He hasn't gone through much of his deck for a Zorg player. Uh, so we'll see if in the maybe 25 cards remaining or so, if he's able to find it. And again, he does see six cards, yeah. which is quite good. He has pretty good odds of hitting it. This would be pretty big for him here. Laying out the six cards. There oh, it is. Wow. He finds it. Yeah, that's a big draw for Ryan. He needed that or he was out of the match. And so uh, this knockout also pretty big for him. Yeah, now he will get the knockout on the Lycanroc GX. Uh, it does have the choice band, so I do believe that's... Yeah, that should be a knockout. That's knockout? 130. 130? Right. Yeah, that's Ryan said, never mind. I, I, do, I do knock you out. <laughs> So what are Michael's options here now? Uh, suddenly it swung again. It, with all that energy clear, cleared off the field, all he's got is a buzz ball with one energy. Yeah, it, it really just depends on how many energy he can accelerate onto the board here. He, it looks like he has max elixir, but how many basic fight energy is he down now? We just saw three hit the discard pile. And so that's where that field blower was clever when it came into play. It meant that Michael was not able to just promote the artillery and use some max elixirs to power up that buzz ball that had energy already. Uh, it meant that he had to be a little bit more considerate and choose an attacker to, to put up the front. That's right. It means Max Elixir also has to be 
uh, all, uh, combined with an energy switch if he wants to get this uh, active buzz wall taking a knockout. Of which Michael does run two. So, I mean, it's not un unlikely that he's going to draw into one at least at some point uh, in the late game. I believe we've seen one already this game, but there should still be a second one live. Uh, and here we've got to see if he's actually going to hit any energy because we've seen quite a lot hit the discard pile. Yeah, it uh, looks like uh, he's shuffling now, so probably does not have it. <laughs> you never know, though. He, he rolled us a little bit on the energy switch. That's so right. <laughs> you never know with Michael Parmawat. And does he have that second auxiliary in his deck that we've seen? Because if he's able to get a second auxiliary out, he's able to see a lot of his deck. Yeah, that would be pretty big for him here. We do see the auxiliary in the Max Elixir. Uh, was not able to find it. Uh, or is that his hand? I believe it's his hand, but I think he just played the Remoraid. So okay. <laughs> not an option this turn, but... Yeah. I wonder if just applying pressure with the Buzz Wall will be enough, though. Uh, if he's able to get off a couple of jet punches and then maybe a knuckle impact, that should be enough to seal the game. Yeah, if this if this jet punch was going into a Zorark, I'd feel very comfortable for Michael, but... Just attacking into the Tapu Lele. Don't have to worry about being knocked out at least, but uh, it, it is a, a, a little bit inefficient to just attack into the, the Tapu Lele for 30 here. Yeah, unfortunately, especially when the Tapu Lele is hitting you back for more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which is not something we... That's supposed to be a support Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not something we typically see Tapu Lele front and center. But we, I think we're going to have to see a Jet Punch. Yeah. 30 um, and 30 onto the Zoroark, uh, possibly setting up for a Guzma play later. Yeah, Michael deciding to uh, attach to his uh, his bench buzzwall instead of the active and uh, Ooh, enhanced the hammer. Oh, enhanced hammer. Yeah, that's a big card. It means that Michael's down another energy, and that's really just all he's looking for. If he has energies, he's gonna win. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> uh, Ryan also has just drawn into the Mew EX as well, which gives him another option to knock out that buzzwall. Yeah, that's a that's a very big card for him here. Be able to copy a, a riotous beating and take a knockout on buzzwall. Especially if he can pair that with Ace Roller and get the DC off the Tapu Lele and the uh, Choice Band at the same time. Yeah. Could, um, it's really sort of, so, sort of starting to swing a little bit of Ryan's favor there. And here we are. Here we see. I think he's going to go for it now. A Riders beating copied by Mew EX uh, will actually be a knockout on this Buzzwall. Yeah, 200 this damage. Very big swing here now. He's going to be able to take the knockout and doesn't really have to worry about being knocked out on the other way. It'd have to be... I, I don't even see it. <laughs> I don't, I don't yeah, know a no. way for this Mew to get knocked out just so. yet. So this is a strategy against Boswell Lycanroc, I guess. Run them out of energy. Yeah, just uh, hope that they don't draw it. Uh, get your enhanced hammers at the right time. Use Tapu Lele and Mew cleans up. So if he's able to get the Boswell back, if Ryan's able to uh, Guzma the Boswell into the active spot and do the same, repeat the process and do another ride of speeding, he'll actually take the game. Yeah, he's put himself in a fantastic spot. Both players at two prize cards. Retrorock is going to come down, a little extra damage, but uh, I think that's just Michael trying to get a few extra cards off his Abyssal Hand. Yeah, definitely, and tilting it sideways just to say, hey, I've used this Abyssal Hand. I do have another one, do have another one available. Uh, haven't used it yet. Yep. See a lot of great players do that just to keep track of what's all happened this turn. And We do see a Brooklet Hill come down. Not uh, has no bench, so can't go anywhere with it, but it's one less card. It means he can get an extra card off of his Abyssal. Yeah, just thinning the deck a little bit. Uh, Helps out a lot to know which cards you can just throw away and which are useless in which matchups and when. Right. Um, yeah, allows you to just get a, an efficient abyssal handoff. And so we see here he has Guzma, Rescue Stretcher, a couple of cards to work with. So he still has options. It's just what is the optimal play and still does also have that Bloodthirsty Eyes available to him, which essentially is that catcher effect uh, while also being able to play a supporter in the same, the same turn. So what is he going to bring into the active spot here? Yeah, it looks like he's targeting down that Zorak without the Float Stone. Could potentially lock that up. Uh, would have to have a double colorless energy to get out of the exit spot, or something like Guzma or Acerola. But unfortunately on Michael's side, though, he hasn't put down any energy. So he's not actually applying any pressure, really. Uh, and he's having a quick look through his deck, and there, I think there's about five or six basic fighting energy and a couple of strong energy. So there are still some available to him. And yeah. he does have a couple in his hand. Well, it looks like he's going to start charging up this Lycanroc and hoping that it can take him the rest of the way. He has already used his GX attack for the game, so oh, not going to get too much Guzma. use, but And that's wow. the game for Ryan. Takes game two. Yep, he's going to be able to take the knockout, copy Riotus beating with Mew, and get himself into game three now. That was a really nice comeback. That's, uh, pretty pretty amazing there for Ryan. Uh, it, it seemed pretty bleak, but he, he was able to come back. He found the perfect lines, knew he needed that, uh, that field blower, 
uh, at that time and then had to go for the end and uh, rip the max potion. And it all worked out for him right there. So uh, a little bit of help from Michael getting that energy switch the first game uh, and the max potion <laughs> yeah. for Ryan that second game. And, Clutch match potion, max uh, potion. Now we'll see uh, who gets the better end of the draws in this game three. So I wonder, this time Michael gets to go first, and it means that he will be applying a lot of pressure straight away onto uh, Ryan there. Absolutely. Uh, could go in his favor. A couple of very early jet punches, able to get knockouts on Zorowas on the Rock Ruffs, which only have 60 HP. Very easy to knock out with just a jet punch with a strong energy and a Reggie Rock. Uh, yeah, that's going to apply a lot of pressure. And if it's a Zorowa, you only need a basic fighting to knock it out. That's right. Yeah, I, th I think we're going to see Michael go for that similar strategy we've been seeing. He starts off with a Buzzwall. Uh, tries to get at least one energy down on a rock rough, and uh, he, he wants Lycan Rock to to start sweeping the board as soon as all the rock roughs and Lycan Rocks are gone from Ryan's side. Uh, if he knows that he can't be Dangerous Rogue right back, uh, he doesn't have to worry about Mew attacking into his Lycan Rock. Uh, that's not going to do too much. And I think the time's going to be playing in a lot of both the players. Uh, so we're going to have to see. That's a mulligan from Ryan. Just gives Michael that extra extra piece he might need to get a few knockouts. Yeah, that, that might help him. We saw the first three cards in his hand were fighting energies. That might be four cards even. Oh, uh, <laughs> he has an end. Okay, well, that'll be helpful. <laughs> uh, not going to be the most uh, thrilling opening turn. <laughs> no max elixirs and anything to go along with it. But And uh, once again, another mulligan here out of Ryan. He's not going to have... Uh, much time to play this game if we just keep shuffling. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, Michael, uh, he's one of the few... Michael's uh, Boswell Lycanroc deck is one of the few that doesn't actually play Bridget, so he doesn't mind playing an end on the first turn. Like, that probably is one of his supporters of choice, or yeah. a Sycamore. Uh, whereas Ryan, obviously, he's going to want to play that Bridget. He's a little bit slower in his setup, perhaps. Uh, Michael's happy to just go jet punch, jet punch, and just knock out multiple Pokemon, uh, get a few cheap prizes. Yeah, we'll see if there's anything impactful over on Rush. Oh, oh, look, the, the Mew. Mew. Yeah, that's not going to be good for him. At least it is at the bottom. Most players tend to draw from the bottom when they take bottom their left. prizes. <laughs> so could be able to find that at the perfect time. But, of course, you got to draw the prize card, and we've seen him struggle to do that without Mew. Yeah, definitely. I think it took, what, four prizes in the last game? <laughs> yeah. It's definitely the MVP. Uh, and here, looking at looking at the fields just as they are, you've got to say Michael's in a pretty good position there. That's Two right. Pokemon that are weak to just a one basic energy attack. Well, this has to feel bad using max elixirs when you have three or four basic fighting energies in oh, your hands. But, but he hits one, so that'll be helpful for him. Getting a little bit of energy acceleration here. Has a second energy in his hand, so we could see him attach to his other buzzwall. Make sure that both of those could get a knockout uh, in the future turns. Yeah, they're both options. It does play the end there as well, so both players are going to shuffle in and draw six, uh, as it is the beginning of the game. Uh, Got to see what is Ryan looking for here. He's just going to have to do his usual setup of a couple of rock rafts, get an energy down. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's not, yeah. not too much available to him. Yeah, I really think he wants to find that, that float stone again, just make it difficult to knock out these Aruas, and definitely Bridget. Bridget would be a great card for him. Uh, there, there is a scenario where maybe he grabs Tapu Lele for Bridget, has the Floatstone and Double Colorless, could get some damage down as well as get a setup, and that'd be the best of both worlds. And we'll just have to see what he's able to draw here. I mean, we can see a, uh, there is a Bridget, there is a DCE and a Choice Pad, but the Lele doesn't factor into that equation, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, that, uh, that doesn't work out too well there. So uh, at least a Bridget. You can't complain about a turn one Bridget. <laughs> it's got to be thinking as well, what can I sacrifice? Because no matter what he's going to be promoting, other than the Tapu Lele, yeah. it's going to get knocked out. That's right. A lot of these Pokemon are very vulnerable to opening Buzzwalls. And uh, that top deck's not going to do too much. Just going to be this Bridget. And his hand, he's got nothing else. He doesn't even have a, a Zorark to potentially start drawing cards later. Yeah, they're all great cards. They're just not great right now, unfortunately. He's no. got one puzzle, <laughs> one field blower. Uh, yeah, he's gonna, we got to see what he's going to grab. I'd say two Rock Ruffs probably and maybe a Zorua. Mm -hmm. uh, just to get himself going, but he doesn't have much else in his hand that he can work with coming up. A DCE, a Choice Band. There is that uh, Lycanroc GX, so he could Bloodthirsty Eyes, but... What are you going to put into the active? Yeah, this the is a scary wallet. spot. He's also looking at Rockruff or Tapu Lele. Does he focus on Tapu Lele as an attacker or get the second Rockruff down because he knows he's just a, a Guzma strong Regirock away from being knocked out and his only Rockruff being gone. So wisely going to take that second Rockruff, but really dependent on his next cards. Even oh. going to use this puzzle. 
Oh, Sycamore. Sycamore. That's a good one. And that's how the puzzle came in handy that time. That's Get right. to look at the top cards. Uh, we do only have a minute 30 left, though, so I'm not sure how quickly Michael Bromwatt's going to be able to take six prizes or vice versa, if Ryan's going to be able to apply enough pressure to knock out both the buzzwalls. Uh in those two turns that you're, he's potentially going to get. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have to see Michael play pretty fast. It looks like he's got the tools he needs, even a Guzma. He's got the Sycamore, though, so it, he's going to just uh, try to get a little more, uh, do that 30-30 on the rock roughs that he's been doing, uh, and then try to set up a double knockout in the coming turn. And there's that Remoraid. I mean, it could be in Ryan's favor if he can potentially just get a knockout on that Remoraid, stop Michael using that Abyssal Hand, which has got him so many resources in the past two games. Yeah. If you can slow Michael down, uh, I don't think he's able to take six prizes with just 45 seconds left, especially when he's doing uh, some turns like this. It's a beautiful setup that works generally, and uh, it, it just might not be enough now. Yeah, definitely. And here he can actually bloodthirsty eyes the Remoraid just to slow Michael down even <laughs> further. We've seen him do it before. He just tries to buy a little time, and uh, he's considering it. I think he likes not to use it. Does not. Yeah. I'll just uh, get this energy down. Uh, play as many cards as he can, even as a field blower for that uh, choice band. That's the perfect Sycamore. Zero, zero to seven. Yeah, I'm so glad we're done with those high fives. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're going to have to see here. He gets a Parallel City, so he could uh, limit Michael to three just to prevent him from really getting anything going. It means that if he has to use the Lele and put it down, that's the third bench slot taken up. Uh, it means that there will be no space for a Rock Ruff. And that is time. So Ryan will be turn zero. Uh, and looking at Michael, will probably be to turn one, so he will get two more turns. Don't see him taking six prizes in those two turns, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, uh, it would have to... No, 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 I don't even see it, no. <laughs> I think both players know what that means. Uh, it's pretty difficult to take that much, uh, those that many prize cards. You can take two through a Zorua and a Rockruff, but yeah, Brian extends the hand. Both players are aware that this game is going to be a tie. Uh, and that was a very hard-fought match. I feel like all three of the... The matches were, well, perhaps not the last one, but the first two matches were certainly on an edge. You didn't know who was going to take 